I've been a massive fan of Wahoo bike computers since the beginning of time, or maybe 2017. In particular, I've had a soft spot for the Wahoo Element Bolt. Before my recent GPS buying spree, the Element Bolt was my go-to bike computer, but as a result of said buying spree, I've purchased the Wahoo Element Roam. I've also bought the brand new V2 version of the Element Bolt, and in this video, I'm going to compare the two. So, clip in, strap on and prepare to zone out. So what do the Wahoo Element Roam and the Element Bolt actually do? Well, they are both fully featured bike GPS devices. They both have onboard microchips and aerials to pick up signals from various satellite networks to work out where they, and therefore you, are at any given moment. They can be used to record where you've been on a ride and at any point on said ride, tell you your speed, distance covered, and a raft of other space time continuum factoids. The Bolt and the Roam also have the ability to connect to a variety of data sensors spread around your bike and your person. At the bog standard end of the sensor spectrum, that might be a speed and cadence sensor or a heart rate strap, increasingly more bog standard, a power meter or an amp plus radar. Less common and frankly made up, parking sensors. The main features that the Bolt and the Roam share will become apparent as we go through this video, but if we're comparing them, presumably you're more interested in the differences. So let's start with those. Prior to the release of the V2 Bolt, the differences were more Tony Stark. Now there are fewer of them, and without giving it away, okay, I will, most of the differences, in my unesteemed opinion, favour the Bolt over the Roam. Size! Without even switching them on, it's obvious that the Bolt is smaller than the Roam. Whilst the new Bolt is very slightly larger than the original V1 version, it still remains a step change more mini than the Roam. I could supply the dimensions, Okay, I will, I'll flash them up on the screen, but the message is better delivered by Videographia. Whilst I get the chunky look aesthetic for me, the Roam is a little bit too meaty, beaty, big and bouncy. Although we have this large case, the proportion of it taken up by the screen is relatively small. The bevels are, how shall we say this? Gigantic? I understand that they need to accommodate two sets of LEDs, one across the top, one down the side, and obviously I'm not party to the technical challenges of designing a decent bike GPS, but for me, the Rome's thick edges are a little bit too much. Weight. The extra size of the Rome obviously translates into more kgs to lug around, or in this case, g's, which is about 25 of them. And as we've discussed almost to the point of boredom on this channel, an extra 25 grams is neither here nor there for 99.9999999% of riders. Forget about it. The out front mount. The cleat fixing type mounty type system type thing is the same between the Rome and the Bolt. Uh, what? Try again. The Rome and the Bolt use the same handlebar or stem mount system, but the out from mounts are different. This makes sense. Both are intended to integrate somewhat into the cut out section on the back of each device. Wahoo claims this makes the Bolt hashtag aero, and on the Rome, well, they're silent, maybe because it looks good. Basically, you need to make sure you use a Bolt device with the Bolt out front mount and a Roam with the Roam out front mount. It all comes down to the size of the cutout. You can use a Roam on a Bolt mount, but it leaves a slightly odd looking gap up here that negates the whole aero smooth integrated type approach. The Bolt's recessed bit is just too small. It won't fit on the Roam mount. Quick aside, the new V2 Bolt will fit on an old V1 Bolt mount but not vice versa. Subject for another video, methinks. LEDs. A key feature of Wahoo bike computers is the use of LEDs built into the bevels around the screen. I love my Wahoo LEDs, as do many other Wahoo La Hoopers. They can be used to display very important data like speed, heart rate, and power, provide alerts, and integrate with third-party devices like the Garmin Varia radar system. In simple terms, the Element Roam has more of them. As mentioned earlier on, it has a row across the top and a column down the left-hand side of the screen. Conversely, the Element Bolt only has the row at the top. Whilst I'm very much partial to a well-used LED and having two sets is nice, I can manage with one. So the Bolt's single set of LEDs is just fine by me. As always, your led age may vary. Bit of radar joke there. Screen. The main selling point in favor of the Roam, now that navigation has been equivalentized, more on that in a moment, is the larger screen. Assuming, of course, that you want a larger screen. With the introduction of the V2 Bolt, 
both devices now have a color screen. So it's all about the size, but actually still a bit about the colors. The Roam sports a 2.7 inch display, whereas the Roam measures diagonally 2.2 inches. In resolution terms, the Roam gets an extra 80 vertical pixels. Its display measures 400 by 240, whereas the Bolt measures 320 by 240. Actually, that's quite a lot more pixels, isn't it? What does this actually mean in practical terms? For me, it doesn't feel like the Roam has a massive amount of extra screen real estate. The Bolt doesn't suffer from a lack of pixels. By way of an extra comparison, the Garmin Edge 530 and 830 with their 2.6 inch screen akin to the Wahoo Element Roam and a resolution of 322 by 246 is almost achieved by the Wahoo Element Bolt with its smaller screen. So the Bolt packs a mighty punch in a diminutive package. The display is clearer and sharper on the Bolt. The Roam can be somewhat pixelated. The Bolt is just a bit more HD. Text size. Text size? Text size. Font size. Before this pixel party descends into full on hashtag bolt love, the Rome's larger screen does retain one important benefit. Many Wahoolians like the way that when you reduce the grid data screen down to one single field, for instance, your speed, the font size increases dramatically. The single data field font size on the Rome is larger than on the bolt. Indeed, you can have two data fields on the Rome and they're still larger than the single data field font size on the Bolt. This relative advantage in terms of font size on the Roam continues as you increase the number of fields on your data screen. And in fact, the larger Roam screen displays up to 11 different data fields, whereas the Bolt will cap out at nine. So if you want to display one data field bigly or the most possible fields literally, then the Roam shades it over the Bolt and talking about shades. Color display. I mentioned the Bolt's V2 version has brought with it rainbows and unicorns. The original V1 Bolt was monochrome. If you wanted a color Wahoo display, then the decision was simple. You had to go with the Roam no longer. And in fact, the Bolt has leapfrogged the Roam in the color state. It displays a positively vibrant 64 different hues, whereas the Roam is limited to just eight. These extra shades are used obviously across the Bolt software wherever subtly different colors are helpful. Most screens on the Bolt have an element of color where the Roam has to stick to monochrome, whether that's the nice blue start button label or the salmon stars next to your favorited roots. More usefully, those extra colors on the Bolt are used as backgrounds for certain data fields, power and heart rate to display which zone you are in with those zones and colors set within the Wahoo Element app. In terms of color and the display experience as a whole, the new Bolt is just better than the Element Roam. Whilst it has color, the Roam still feels a bit monochromy. The white backgrounds are more like a dull yellowish gray. The blocks of black don't quite get there either. Compared to the Bolt, it all just feels a bit washed out. Finally, and I'm not sure if this is a big point or not, but the way that the Roam screen updates is a bit uh, different. It sort of wipes from left to right as you change between screens and go up and down the menus. It's quite noticeable, whereas the Bolt just changes in the normal way. On balance, I prefer not thinking about the screen updating, but I suppose it's not a deal breaker. Fonts. I guess this is sort of linked to the display section mixed in with a dash of user experience. Stop whiffling. The new Bolt uses a greater variety of fonts than its predecessor and the Rome, or perhaps it's the same font, just with more liberal use of lowercase. Where the Rome uses capital letters throughout, the Bolt uses a mix of the two. Pop-up alerts tend to be in lowercase. Now I'll admit it doesn't feel like the Rome spends all of its time shouting at me and the Bolt remains heavily skewed towards the capital letter. I can't see this difference forming any part of the buying decision for the rational cyclist, but hands up, who here is rational. Buttons. For the most part, the buttons on the Wahoo Element Roam and the Bolt are the same. They have the same number and they're all located in broadly the same place. Power slash menu on the left-hand side, up, down on the right-hand side, and three multi-function buttons underneath the screen on the front. The main difference, and this results from its recent redesign, is that the three buttons on the front of the Bolt are now flush with the top of the device and therefore the screen. The Roam follows the approach of the first generation Bolt with the three buttons being slightly recessed. The change on the Bolt came apparently because some users gave feedback they had difficulty pressing the buttons. Now, I quite like the way that the buttons are indented on the Roam and they guide the finger where they need to press. But I won't die in a ditch on it. The button
buttons on the new Bolt R5, it's not a deal breaker. Charging port. Who'd have thunk that the charging port would have merited a sentence, let alone a section of this video, but here we are. The new Element Bolt has, shock horror, a USB-C charging port, as opposed to the Rome's rather old-fashioned micro USB aperture. In the bike GPS world, it's the Bolt that's rather unusual rather than the Rome. Garmin still uses a micro USB charging port, as do Brighton and others. USB-C makes the Bolt quicker to charge. It can take up to five amps if your power adapter and cable can supply it. The micro USB on the Rome is more like 1.5 amps. Now this isn't something that would ordinarily impact my life, other than that my list of USB-C devices is starting to reach critical mass. But in a scenario where you realise just before a ride that your GPS is out of charge, the USB-C on the Bolt means it will reach a point of sufficient charge, whatever that might mean to you, before the roam. Charging port type is not going to drive your buying decision unless you're a peculiarly hardline electrical engineer, but it's definitely another plus in the Bolt's pros column. And it sort of leads us to battery life. So, battery life. The Element Rome's larger size houses a more capacious battery. Wahoo states up to 17 hours between charges. The Bolt, as befits its more humble size, accommodates a more modest battery. This gives it a claimed 15 hours of use before requiring a hot beef power injection. <laughs> Stupid. In practical terms, there's not much in it. Unless you're doing a series of monster rides day after day with no plug socket in sight, then both devices have sufficient battery life that charging doesn't become an annoyance. Storage. Technology, huh? It's a funny old trout. The Wahoo Element Roam is bigger and therefore has a larger battery. The Wahoo Element Bolt is smaller, but manages to fit in more onboard storage of the electronic sort. This might well be Moore's law in action, not to be confused with Murphy's Parkinson's or sods. The new Bolt has 16 gigabytes, the Rome has 4 gigabytes. I consulted Euclid and he told me that that's four times as much. The Bolt uses its additional memory banks to store maps for Europe, Australia and North America, which are already loaded onto the device. And these maps now include elevation data which is nice and actually also useful for showing the upcoming ride profile for routes calculated on the device itself. Navigation. This is mainly a similarity rather than a difference, but I will list it here with the latter because, hey, it's my YouTube channel. The navigation mini difference is that the combination of more colors and definition on the new element bolt means that the maps appear more detailed than on the Rome. This is most obvious as you zoom out, the higher def bolt can show more place names and smaller roads. Now, obviously you're not going to follow a route at this sort of scale, but it's helpful if you need to find out where you are relative to nearby towns and villages. Aside from that, the Bolt and the Rome are the same from a navigation perspective. The wire historians amongst you will remember this wasn't the case with the original Bolt, but with the V2 now having full onboard navigation, this makes it exactly the same as the Rome. When following a route and you go off course, both devices will recalculate and provide revised turn-by-turn -turn directions to get you back on track. You can upload routes to both devices in the same way using the Element app. And on the devices, you can select a location on a map using a set of crosshairs and the bolt or the Rome will calculate you a route. Apart from the screen definition, navigation is the same ball. Sounds. The bleeps, they sound slightly different, but they occur in exactly the same places, mainly for alerts. <coughs> Only of interest for those with particularly sensitive ears, which isn't me. Software features. Another category that could also slot into the similarities section, but again, here we are. Where possible from a technical perspective, the new software features that have come with the release of the new Bolt have also been added to the Roam via firmware updates. For example, the software on the new Bolt has added WhatsApp notifications, where previously we were limited just to texts and emails. I think the Roam has also received this update. I'll let you decide whether having your ride distracted by memes and questionable humor is a good thing. There are a couple of areas where the Roam's hardware limitations mean a few software features can't be ported across. As mentioned, the Roam's limited color palette means it doesn't get data fields that color code to the relevant zone, heart rate or power that you're riding in. The smaller onboard storage means the Roam's maps don't contain elevation data. Instead, you'll rely on the route file you upload from Strava or wherever to contain the relevant data to allow you to see the route profile for your upcoming ride. Age. 
or will Wahoo bring out a new version? Well, Wahoo just surprised us all with the new Color V2 version of the Bolt, so there's always the potential for this to happen. I think it's fairly safe to say that we won't see a new version of the Bolt for some time. It's brand new and there were four years between the release of versions 1 and 2. The Roam is obviously older than the Bolt. It was launched in 2019, making it 23 in squirrel years. If Wahoo maintains the current update cadence as they did with the Bolt, this gives us a couple more years with the current Roam model. I've got no special insight on this one though, certainly no one from Wahoo HQ is calling the sportive cyclist bat phone on a regular basis. My Wahoo device lifecycle analysis is pure speculation, which is also the tagline of this YouTube channel. I should note and this is obviously a good thing. Wahoo does appear to have a policy of updating the software on the older devices as it introduces new features on the newer ones. Brackets limited to those features that can be supported by the older hardware. So I'd be pretty comfortable about getting plenty of use along with continued Wahoo support out of either the Roam or the Bolt. I did say all of those words, so we have to move on. Price. In my Wahoobrance, wa in my exuberance, I forgot to mention in this one. The Roam costs more than the Bolt and the size of the price difference depends where you live. At the time of filming Wahoo on its website is pricing the Bolt at £250 or $280 and the Roam at £300 or $380. Clearly if the price has changed by the time I get round to editing I'll flash up the new prices on the screen here, links to both devices are in the description below. I should say these prices are for the devices only, but including the relevant outfront mount. Bundles involving heart rate straps and speed and cadence sensors are available. Two observations. Number one, the price step up between the Bolt and the Roam seems greater in the US than in the UK. $100 seems a bit more than 50 quid. But number two, prices overall are a lot lower in the US versus the UK. £250 translated into US dollars is a lot more than the $280 that the Bolt is priced at. Not really sure what you're going to do with that information. Moving on. Similarities between the Wahoo Element Bolt and the Rome. You've probably worked these out already, apart from a few obvious physical differences and some technical ones because the Rome's a touch older, the majority of the software features and the functionality of the two devices is very similar. The user experience, which is Wahoo's key advantage over say the Garmin Edge series is very good, whether on the Rome or the Bolt. Initial setup for both is really quick and easy. Both are smartphone first. Some of the settings can only be changed on the Wahoo Element app rather than via the menu on the devices themselves. This makes the screens and options actually on the devices cleaner with fewer menu rabbit holes to fall down. Also mentioned that the Bolt has a sharper display. Both devices can reduce down the number of fields on the data screens in order to maximize text size for easy viewing. Both devices connect to all the same sensors, smart trainers and other devices via Ant Plus, Bluetooth and Ant Plus FEC. The Roam and Bolt will upload your ride data and download any workouts or routes automatically via Wi-Fi or via Bluetooth with your phone. There's no difference in how they sync with third-party apps like Strava. In summary, both the Roam and the Bolt just work, which is nice. Which brings us to our final question, which one would I recommend? Back in the version one Bolt days, the Roam versus Bolt buying decision was based on a few clear distinctions. If you wanted a color screen and or onboard navigation, then you went with the Roam. Now there are fewer material differences, although I've managed to film a 20 minute video on the topic. Lol. The V2 Bolt has a color screen and has onboard mapping. So then it comes down to size. You'd expect the Roam's 2.7 inch screen to suit those wanting a larger display and the Bolt to appeal to those that want a smaller form factor and to be hashtag aero. But the new Bolt's brighter, more colourful and seemingly more defined screen for me offsets the Rome's size advantage. Aesthetics wise, I'm as big a fan of Chunky as the next man, but the Rome is just a bit too much. It's quite a lump 
of GPS on my handlebars. I prefer the look and feel of the new Bolt, even if I do think that the flat rather than slightly recessed front buttons, yes, I said front buttons, are a backward step. Slightly. I loved my original monochrome V1 Bolt, even without full onboard navigation, it did, or rather does, everything I need from a bike computer. I never once wished for a larger display. And I like the upgrades on the new Bolt. I'm not going to say no to whiz-bang mapping or attractive colour graphics. It still does all of the original stuff well. So I'd still choose and recommend the Bolt over the Roam. And that's even before we've talked about the lower price, which is super important to this deep pockets, short armed Yorkshireman. As always, your GPS mileage may vary. Do your own satellite guided research, etc. If you found this video useful, please do hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you like road cycling, shaved legs and lube. I've been Monty, this is Sportive Cyclist. I'll see you in the next video. On guard! <laughs> Whatever. Made that joke, can we?